Hey, aloha everybody and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. This is Security Matters Hawaii. I'm Andrew, your host. Um, today we're talking about a topic that we've, we've been kicking around just a little bit. You know, it's National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, um, but October is also bully, anti-bullying month. Um, and we've got a real industry professional to talk with us today. Alana Williams is with us. Um, she's out of the East Coast. And Alana, I really appreciate you taking time today to join us uh, to talk about this, this problem. Um, it seems widespread to me and, and it, it doesn't seem to be shrinking. So uh, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, where is she? I, I know she's coming in here shortly. There we are. Hey, Alana, hi. Hello, hi, how are you? Great, aloha. Um, so I'll tell you what I'd like to start off. Uh, let's just get some of your background for our audience who may not know your work. Um, you know, as much as you'd care to share kind of uh, your, your, your history and then what you brought you up to this sort of topic here uh, that, that really resonates for us in the month of October. Well, great, great. Again, uh, my name is Alana Williams. Um, I'm born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio, but I live here in Montgomery. Montgomery is now my new home or second home. Um, through going to college here in Alabama, um, through being uh, a police officer of 10 years. Uh, I just started to transition in the last two years of uh, wanting and having the desire to teach more of law enforcement or criminal justice classes because that's what my um, background is in with a bachelor and master's in criminal justice. And so I transitioned a couple years ago to teach uh, full time at Alabama State University, instructor of criminal justice. And immediately um, I saw that, um, yes, I had that fulfillment and what I want to do, but I just, I didn't feel complete. Mm. And so I, after just analyzing what is it that I want to do, I realized that it was time for me to branch out on my own and to start my um, own business. And with that being said, I started JA Investigative Services, which is a licensed entity in the state of Alabama. And initially, I started doing doing the um, what you consider the typical PI work, surveillance and process serving and uh -huh. helping attorneys. And I said, you know what, this is still kind of not what I want to do. And so I kind of just transformed my business into um, doing workplace harassment investigations. And so I became a certified EEO investigator. And so this allows me to be a third party, a neutral party for any type of business or organization to come in and to investigate any complaint of workplace harassment, sexual harassment, discrimination or retaliation. And so with that being said, um, just being on LinkedIn and having a network connection, people started to reach out to me and then it started to be school guidance counselors and school mm. principal. And they said, hey, I see your credentials. I see what you're doing. Workplace harassment can be very similar to school bullying and cyber bullying and other safety concerns that we had. Um, would you mind putting together a program for us? And so my first student engagement wow. program that I put together was actually through uh, student sexual violence. And then with that, um, the school wanted me to come back and do bullying and cyber bullying. And so, of course, the reason why we're here today is that October is recognized as the National Bullying Prevention Month. And so what I do is I go into schools, I go with youth groups, YMCA churches. I even did a church this past um, Wednesday. And basically what I do, I offer engagement activities. And these engagement activities specifically for your show is going to be your bullying your cyber bullying and also bullying your special needs students. Mm. And so I come in and I've developed my own curriculum engagement activity with students and they range anywhere between 30 minutes and one hour, uh, two hours, excuse me. And then um, what I would like to teach people is that um, when you're talking about deterring bullying, it takes more than just engaging students. So through my company, I do offer the prevention training with students, but I also offer the prevention training and awareness for educators, being mm. our superintendents, being our uh, school nurses, our teachers. And then it's very crucial to bring the parents involved. And so I can also do uh, trainings for parents that typically is sponsored by the school. Mm. You know, I've, I've heard that the, it seems a lot of the kids when this stuff's going on, whether they're on the 
they're the bully or they're the, the maybe the victim. Let's use that word. Um, a lot of times they're they're pretty adept with their devices and they'll hide their activity from adults or from they don't really trust uh, maybe the school administrator or they trust don't trust their parents or they if they're the victim maybe they just think they'll handle it themselves. Is that a, a topic that comes up in in the trainings that you're given to these um, youth? Oh, most definitely, most mm. definitely. Uh, through my training, we basically we, we're going to start at the top with talking about what bullying is and what it looks like, mm. and then giving mm. specific examples. Then um, we also want to definitely tell people why why bullying occurs and how do we respond to it. And so when we get into that, and then you start talking about how do we deter it or the effects it has, um, it's very important to understand that your bullies tend to do these aggressive acts when adults are not around. So mm. they're going to do it when a teacher is not looking, a teacher stepped out the room, or they're going to do it in certain parts of the school where it's no a visible adult in the hallway or, mm. or on the bus, even on the bus, because you know normally our adult is um, primarily concerned with driving the bus and safe transportation. And so these 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 bullies are basically trying to get away with it. They they know it a lot of times they do know it's wrong. Ah. And so they want adults not to know about it because they know that there are consequences. What what's the in your you know in your investigations, what's sort of a motivation for the bully? Um, are they is it jealousy? Is it all the above? I guess what are the range of motivations? Let me ask you that. So maybe a better um, question. Oh, it, it definitely. I mean, from just being jealous of another person, uh, boredom. They have nothing else to do at the moment, <laughs> but to they want attention on themselves. Mm. Um, low self esteem. Bullies tend to have lack self confidence themselves or have low self esteem. Mm. Um, some researchers also have said that. Um, Sibling rivalry um, mm. has contributed to bullying, especially when the when the younger sibling is being bullied and they know that they can't quote unquote beat their older sibling. They tend to want to take it out their frustration and anger. They tend to want to take it out on other people, and then you oh. start to look at your classmates. You start to look at your classmates, and so they want to take it out on people that's their size and their their age group. And wow. so sibling rivalry, um, power, most definitely power. It's a it's an imbalance of power. It's a it could be a real or perceived power, pow, excuse me, power imbalance. Mm -hmm. And so, again, this bully, this bully wants to feel more empowered above more than wow. um, than the person that they are bullying. And so it's so many different um Factors and it definitely upbringing has a lot to do with why we bully. Because mm. if we haven't been, it's very important for our parents to teach our kids to be nice. Mm. That's simple. To be, to be respectful of others, to be kind, to be helpful. And so, if you're if you're upbringing and that's what you know and that's all you're used to. And so there's a lot of judgmental things that's going on. There's a lot of mm. criticism things going on. There's a lot of um, inequity, whether it's being race or gender that you see within your household. And then that individual is going to grow up um, through their youth years just thinking that there's some type of there's some type of judgment. There's some type of I'm better than you. And so, mm. yes, we definitely have. Um, uh, uh, just so many things. And then also, uh, we can't forget that people actually bully because they might be bullied by someone else. Mm. And so again, it's kind of similar with the si uh, sibling rivalry. But yeah, a, a person that's being bullied would turn around and bully someone else to make them feel better, to make wow. them feel um, more empowered because someone else is making them feel like that they don't have control over themselves or power over themselves. Wow. Um, are these bullies, when you when you get to talking to them in the course of an investigation, are they aware of the pain they cause or are they surprised? Is it like, like I didn't think it was that bad? Or how, what are their reactions when this 
is is brought to them does it does it is it happen like all of a sudden they go wow i get it i didn't understand or is it a learning process it it sounds like it could take a a while to learn that type of behavior so maybe the unlearning of it also uh, could take a while yeah I, it's definitely i would say it's definitely some a, a, a mixture there because you want to understand that um, a lot of kids don't understand or recognize what bullying is. Um, mm. As you and I talked uh, pre-show, is that uh, nationally, they uh, statistics are showing about anywhere between 20 and 22% of students report that they have been bullied. Mm. Um, I actually believe that that number is much higher. And I'm actually, have within the last um, several months, starting to do actual just assessments and data myself because what we find out is that students the name calling the teasing the things that they feel that are being they're harmless the things that they feel that um are just funny it's just a joke to them it's not serious and so a lot of times our students are not recognizing that their actions, their acts, their behavior is actually considered to be bullying. Wow. And so when you're looking at an average rate of 20%, um, I think it's really important to understand what type of foundation or what type of uh, definition are we giving these students to mm -hmm. identify, to get them to identify if they have been a part of these um, statistics or not. So definitely, I think it's been just a matter of students feeling like, and parents, don't forget about parents, uh, feeling like, oh, it's just harmful. It's what kids do. That's what teenagers do. Mm. That's what best friends do. And so we tend to minimize um, the behavior because we're looking at it from the bully perspective and we're not looking at it from the victim perspective because mm. it's how the victim is perceiving the um, behavior. Sure. So just because, I mean, just because it was a joke to you, just because it was just meant to be funny or you were just teasing, if that person perceived it or took it as something that was harmful, that was embarrassing, that was intimidating, we have to look at how the victim received it. Mm. Are, um, in your experience, are these bullies, is this their sort of the, the way they operate, you know, where one bully, one guy or a person is, is bullying lots of people, that's just like the way they function? Or are they, is it, like you said, I know you talk some, maybe maybe I got bullied, so then I'm bullying someone else. Am I, am I likely to just operate that way? Um, what, what have you come across, um, you know, in your, in your investigations? What I am seeing is that um, yes, you do have what we call or what we've seen in the past years, the typical bully that goes around and bully other students, because especially when you're talking about um, your different bullying is bullying and it's wrong. But you definitely have your different types of bully, be, bullying uh, behavior. It can be nonverbal. It can be mm. verbal. And so when you're talking about your your most dangerous, when there's some type of physical contact. Mm -hmm. Whether there's, you know, uh, pushing, shoving, sticking your feet out to, you know, to trip, trip someone. Mm -hmm. um, right. We, we definitely see that those that have physical contact with students tend to be, tend to have more aggression issues. And they tend to be bullying, bullying towards multiple people. Wow. But then you just have a widespread of bullying that's among the, the, the name call. Um, and just also just the, just the teasing mm -hmm. and things like that. So, um, there are so many, there are so many things. I do apologize. No worries. <laughs> okay. I, I thought I turned everything off. Um, I, I definitely, um, we, you know, we definitely just see that widespread to where, um, it's, it's just that, um, it, it's just kind of widespread because a lot of times you see bullying within friends, mm -hmm. within friendships. It doesn't necessarily have to be with the person that is not, um, you know, a, a relation. 
And yeah. also you see that actually girls, girls versus guys, boys, girls tend to be at the higher number of bullying incidents when it comes to, because when you're talking about, um, when you're talking about um, name calling, isolation, mm -hmm. ignoring people, or oh, I'm not being your friend anymore. And so we actually are seeing a higher number um, bullying among female to female as opposed to male to male and vice versa with the two wow. genders. Just amazing. Um, we're going to take a break and pay a few bills. Uh, we're with Alana Williams. Do not miss the next piece. We'll be back in one minute. Aloha, my name is Victoria and I'm a host at the Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaboration between U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, and its partners, where we showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses, talk about how to start a business, talk about great tips for small business owners. Uh, please join us every Thursday, 11 a.m. at Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, see you soon. Mahalo. Hello, I'm Mufi Hanavan. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101, where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. It's been great for us in the past. We need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hey, aloha and welcome back to this episode of Security Matters Hawaii. We're with Alana Williams from JA Investigative Services. And we're talking about uh, bullying. We're talking about cyberbullying. This is uh, Bullying Awareness Month. Uh, Alana, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank before, you for having me. No worries. You know, before we went to the break, you, you were talking a little bit about the variances in gender and that uh, maybe some of the, the females uh, bullying other females is... Uh, um, a worse problem than the boys or uh, the males bu bullying the uh, males. Can you tell yes. us, uh, expand on that a little bit for us? Um, again, um, dealing with the females, the, the number 10, the, the statistic in bullying tends to be a little bit higher um, because when you're looking at the certain acts of um, name calling, um, calling someone out of their name, name shaming, mm. um, isolation, um, intentionally not speaking to them and intentionally telling your friends not to speak to this friend. Don't wow. sit with this friend at lunch. Um, and, and, and the hate is, of course, it's just a general, a generalization, but those are your typical types of behavior that tend to be among your females, huh. as opposed to the guys, they're going to do the slap on the back of the head. You know, they're mm -hmm. going to do the the shoulder bump. They're going to ah. do the, you know, the, the, the more of your 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 physical contact. They're going to do more of the um, knocking your books out of their hands and things like that. Wow. And so, uh, again, all of those acts are definitely bullying. They're definitely considered to be aggressive behavior. Um, but you again, you see it among your females. And again, a lot of your female students think they think that it's harmless. Mm -hmm. They just think that, oh, well, I was mad at them in the moment and so it was okay. Or wow. this is the way I felt in the moment. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And um, it's really not because you addressed it earlier that a lot of these behaviors, um, if it's not corrected, especially with your with your more aggressive behavior, then we start to see that in our workplaces. Mm. And so then we start to see these behaviors um, on the jobs where um, coworkers can't get along mm. Be, or, your, or your supervisor, your manager, your boss, they don't have good leadership skills mm -hmm. or they're, they're bullying. Their leadership style is bullying, mm. is intimidation. And so you definitely just start to see that um, when it's not addressed properly. Wow. Are these... Um patterns um that, that show up like that i mean do, can you start with just kind of being a smart aleck and then you you start to become a bully or online cyber bullying somebody and then it gets 
escalates itself actually to become physical? Is that a, a yes. typical sort of pathway? It's, I wouldn't say necessarily typical, but it could okay. happen. Um, mm -hmm. Because uh, one, one of the things that I, I, I try to make students understand is that once you start to bully someone, whether it's a, a, a bullying incident as opposed to a cyber incident, um, and of course, when we talk about cyberbullying, we're talking about anything that's done by email, over mm -hmm. the phone, social media, chat rooms, video, videography, any any of those things. Mm -hmm. And so what what we're trying to what I try to make students understand is that once you once you commit to an action, once you do something, once you act on something, you cannot control the reaction. Mm, okay. Very true. And so that is that is so important for them to understand that when you initiate this, you do not understand or do not know how it can start as a joke and then mm. leads to more bullying, more bullying, bringing other people involved, um, physical. Like you said, it it can be a progression of. It can be, it turns into a fight, a physical fight between two wow. students. Wow. And so I, I, I make them understand, again, we're talking about the perception of the, of the individual, of the person that's being bullied. Mm -hmm. So you do not know what that person is going through at the moment. Yeah. And you do not, and you cannot control the reaction of someone else. Yeah. Yeah, that, okay. that's a, such an important part. And in EEO law, we teach that even to adults today because they're, they're not aware that that other person might not be in a space to accept your joke today or whatever it is right there. Yeah. You have no way of understanding what they're feeling, what they're going through. And that's a, I think it's amazing to me when we, we have to teach that to adults. You know, we do EEO classes. I'm sure you've had those investigations as well. But when we get back to these kids, the they're, I don't want to say they're more fragile, but I think they're growing, you know, they're learning and they're trying to figure out the world. And if the world's treating them this way, you know, what, what are you, what do you find that, that they're feeling about themselves? What do they report to you in these investigations as, you know, um, victims of this, this type of, of behavior? Yeah. So what, so the effects of bullying can range from very mild to, to dramatic. Mm. Um, and so you're talking about uh, effects, you're talking about social effects, you're talking about emotional effects and, and physical effects. And so your social effects are going to be your withdrawal, not wanting to be around uh, your friends anymore, not wanting to go mm. to school activities. Uh, their grades may start to fall. Mm. Um, they start becoming helpless and they start feeling insecure. Wow. And so those are some of the effects socially. Um, emotionally, loss of sleep, loss of eat, negative thoughts. So your negative thoughts and you start to believe, oh, well, I am stupid. Mm. Why well, I am ugly. I can't, you know, and so all mm. of these negative things, they start to internalize these negative things that are um, brought upon them. And like you said that, you know, youth are so much fragile. And so they have not yet learned how to deflect and deal with some of these negative things as we tend to learn the older and older we get. Mm -hmm. And then of course you have your physical effects and that's going to be your extreme where students will can self mutilate themselves. Mm. They can start cutting on themselves. They can start mm. burning themselves with cigarettes. And then definitely we're talking about suicide mm. um, because that's a topic that needs to be discussed mm -hmm. again. You don't know what that person is going through. Um, you don't know how, even though you think it's just uh, playful, you don't understand the effect that that person is, that it has on that person, having to endure that two and three times a day for five days a week. Mm -hmm. And not having any peace because in this environment, you're having to deal with it. And then when you go home, when they go home, you can't just turn it off. Mm -hmm. Because they're internalizing, they're, they're trying to, they're trying to realize or, or just think, well, why me? Why is it happening to me? I mm. must be stupid. Mm. I must be dumb. Mm. Um, and all, all of these things. And so it's something that we definitely, it's not an on off switch for our victims. And so again, um, and even with adults, we all have different levels of emotional and mental stability. 
And so you don't know what that child is going through. You don't know what that student is going through to feel like that, okay, this is something that they need to stop doing or feel like that their life will be so much better if they were just gone from this earth. Wow. And so I try to, I try to actually leave on that note when I engage students mm -hmm. to make them understand it may be innocent to you, but it's having a tremendous and negative effect on the person that you bully. Are, um, are bullying victims often bullied by like more than one person or is it, have they just come across someone that just keeps pushing them and pushing them down and down or, or, or are they, do they get a victim mentality and like there's a lot of people treating them badly. Have you come across scenarios like that? De definitely, and I and I have not seen yet to date any statistics okay. um, among that particular. But I can tell you that um, the the students that are being the students that are being bullied, um, they tend to identify one to two people. Okay, um, and then. And I will honestly say, um, I would say I haven't seen or even noticed a big difference of whether these two people are related, friends, oh. they run in the same circle, or it's two different people. I and see. so I'm, I'm thinking that, yeah, because I, I haven't, uh, and thank you, that was a great question. <laughs> um, I haven't I haven't noticed any anyone that's higher than the other. Okay. As far as um, the accounts of it. Okay. We've got about a minute left. Um, what would you share with our audience? What's the takeaway, uh, your final message uh, from, from your, your experience in this industry? Uh, well, what can we do to help? Um, one of the things that um, I, I, I try to teach all of my potential clients when we talk about how do we deter, deter bullying. Yes, I could come in and I could do uh, student engagement with your students, but it takes a collaborated effort. And to, and, in order to keep our students safe, in order to reduce these numbers of bullying, we have to, one, we have to engage our students. Two, we have to involve our parents, which means that we have to, and, and, and not many, but I actually have known a couple of school districts that they mandate, that they require that parents do one to two hours of anti-bullying training a awesome. year before awesome. school starts. Good. And then your, your school officials. So we have to develop, um, like we have to develop assessments. We need to figure out how often if it, how often this occurring, what location, what are the, who are the people, how are we responding to it? We need to implement policies and we need to stick by our policies. So it's a collaborative effort between the student, the parents, and your school officials or your youth groups or any way to, to decrease these numbers. And awesome. once you be able to put all of these entities, and it's great to come in and do one training, whatever helps, because if I could come in and at least that prevents one person from being bullied and that helps, great. But when, you want, when you're talking about a significant number, you're talking about changing the culture, you're talking about changing the lifestyle. Yeah. Awesome. Alana, thank you very much for joining us today. Out there in the world, you got some great advice. Please take care of these kids. They need your help and they need continuing support. It's gotta be a constant process. Parents, uh, school teachers, uh, trusted, trusted adults. Uh, this is a problem we can work on and we can hopefully resolve. Thanks so much for joining us today. Aloha and take care.